All right, thanks, thanks for coming, uh, everyone. Um, today, <clears throat> I want to go over something called Combo Breaker. Um, Combo Breaker is a device I've built, uh, and it essentially can crack master combination locks. So you can actually take this. It's uh, 3D printed. It uses an Arduino and a couple of motors. <clears throat> oh, awesome. OK, sorry. So we're talking about Combo Breaker. Um, this is a device that you can 3D print. You can use Arduino and a couple of motors. And together, you can take a master combination lock, any master combination lock, put it inside the device, and the device will crack it for you. Um, I'll show you a little, uh, a little video here. And you can also build this. So I've put everything on YouTube. Here, we'll see it in just a second. Go. Here, here it is. So basically, it feels for resistance on the shackle and then um, does some turning stuff there. So I guess I want to explain this and um, also show that any, any one of you can also build this and actually improve upon it. Um, so we'll start with sort of how, it all, uh, how the basics work. Um, for one, we're starting with master combo locks. Everyone see these things? Yeah, everyone's used one of these. OK, so normally you have three different three different combos you're supposed to enter. So you'll enter sort of, you'll turn it right twice to a certain number to the left and then to the right. Um, there's 40 digits, so four, uh, because there's three, um, pos there's three numbers that you have to enter, that means there's 40 times 40 times 40, 64,000 possibilities uh, if you were to get this. Now, I was curious because a long time ago, there, someone had discovered that you can actually reduce the number of combinations from 64,000 down to 100. Um, so I was really curious how they, how they did that. And what they found is that if you lift the shackle up, you end up getting the combination stuck. Um, and I'll pass this around so we can all see what happens when you lift the shackle and you get the combination stuck. And what's happening is it's getting stuck in some groove inside of the device. Um, another thing I did here is, uh, I'll see if I can, yeah. I ended up drilling this thing open so you could actually see what's inside the combination lock so you can actually understand how it works inside because I didn't understand how they figured that out. Um, so I've cut it up here and actually I'll pass this around so everyone can check it out. So inside, we have all sorts of, I don't know, interesting things. So I'll pull up a video so we can all see it, uh, see it a little better here. If, uh, if I have that one here. Oh, man. Let's see if we have any parts of that in here. Um, so essentially, what I found in this combo, in this combination lock that, you, that you're uh, looking at now is, A, when you pull the shackle up and you turn it, you're getting stuck in these grooves. And these grooves are kind of on this side here. So whenever you're turning the dial, you're always actually turning this little, this little dial here inside. And there's these little grooves that you can see. Let me see if that, if that zooms. Those grooves you're getting stuck in. Now, what's interesting is only one of these grooves is the actual dial. So right there is the number that we want. We want that to basically match up um, with uh, wherever our shackle is so that the shackle can be set free. So the problem is that I feel like as you're turning this, you can feel a groove. You can turn it some more, feel a groove, turn it some more, feel a groove. And you're, you'll get stuck in each one. However, there's something unique about this one big groove when you're feeling it. 
it's that it's slightly wider than all the other grooves. So actually, if you're pulling this shackle up and you're turning, you'll notice you go maybe about half, uh, half a number, between five and six, for example. But once you hit the right groove, you'll actually be, you'll go about a full number, a full number of rotation. And what that means is you're actually in the bigger groove. And that groove is related to the third number. So once you feel that, you actually just learn what the full third number is. So that would reduce your 64,000 possibilities to, let's see, 40 times 40. That would bring you down to 1,600. Um, that's been known for a while. Um, another issue I found in this is that when you're spinning these, when you're spinning these inside, it's actually turning, it's rotating these guys, um, these discs as well. So if you see, these two also have these grooves in here. And each one, this is your third number, this is your second number, this is your first number. And as you two turn one, and then stop, and then turn the other way, it then turns the next disc, and then these turn the third, it turns the, next, the last disc. So we can also feel for the first disc by also pulling up the shackle, but pulling it up only halfway. And I'll actually, I'll pass this around. Um, here. And I'll pass this around, and I will teach you something here that's pretty cool. And this works on every single master combination lock out there. So what I found was that if you lift the shackle, not all the way that you get stuck, but about only halfway, and you turn it a full rotation, every time you turn a full rotation, you should feel resistance at the same place. If you're not feeling that resistance, um, you can adjust the shackle, how much you're lifting the shackle. Maybe you want to go about halfway and then turn. And I feel resistance around 15. So I want to see if you can all feel that resistance as you turn it, uh, turn it uh, clockwise. And you'll feel just a little bump. Um, if you're feeling that bump, what you're feeling is you're feeling, feeling an internal mechanism in this lock hitting up against one of this groove. Now, when you're doing that, it's actually on this groove. This is on the first combination disc. By doing that, this is slightly offset from this. And I've calculated that means you're five digits away. So from here, where you're hitting, to here, the actual number is five digits. So whatever number you hit and feel resistance, so I'm feeling 15. If you add five, that's your first number. So now, you know the first number and the third number. And you have only 40 digits left. And then there's a mathematical correlation between all of these, for, uh, between the second disc and the first and third, because these little bumps can only hit at certain points at, as you're rotating them. So I'll pass this around, and I want you to all turn this counterclockwise while pulling the shackle, not all the way up. If you pull it all the way up, you'll, you'll get stuck. But you want to pull it up so you can rotate it at least 360 degree, or three, you know, all the way around, but that you feel resistance. And once you feel resistance at 15, then you're holding it right. And you've just found the first number by adding five. So. Um, so I have a few more minutes. Uh, did I pass this? No, I'll pass this around. So I'll actually pass this, this guy around. <clears throat> and if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, I have a YouTube channel where, thank you. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where um, I go, I have a couple videos on this specific thing and also other reverse engineering and hacking and coding and 3D printing and 3D modeling um, and hardware, uh, hardware hacking, where I go step by step from start to finish on, for example, building this project. So you can actually build your own. Um, I have another Arduino, uh, a simpler version here as well that uh, I have powered. So you can just see this uh, motor in action. I'll just plug it in here. And I teach you how to build this stuff. Um, I think this stuff is so, it's so incredible. I mean, you can just like, I'll just play this video again. Around 30 seconds. Go. And I have full source code, the full schematics to build this. Uh, I teach you how to do some basic 3D modeling so you can learn how to make sort of that outside shell. Um, that silver stuff is plastic. Um, you can see it here. Let's see. Oh, oh no. Uh. OK, there we go. Um, so how to 3D model that, um, where to get it 3D printed if you don't have access to a 3D printer. Uh, I go to a, a hacker space in Los Angeles called Crash Space. Um, 
Also, I show the internals of this thing. And in general, just to try to teach some basic uh, reverse engineering and, and kind of like problem solving for this kind of stuff. Um, I think this stuff is incredible. And you know, I know all of you can, can really contribute to this kind of stuff. You guys can help build things, um, break things, hack things. Uh, and there's so much, so much more that can be done. So I'd love if, uh, if any of you are ever interested, you know, please email me. Please uh, you know, watch the videos, comment on the videos. I'll always respond. Um, and if there's any kind of stuff that you want to learn, like I'd love to, I'd love to help share that. Um, I've learned a lot from other people when I was younger, and I would love to see if, uh, if I can have help other people, and uh, you guys can probably help me at some point. So I'd love that. Does anyone have any questions? It's a blinding light. So let me see if there's any. Okay. Question. To what? Oh, the Jeep hack. Uh, I I didn't do uh, uh, I didn't do Jeep. I did the GM OnStar. Yeah, yeah, GM. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe two weeks ago, uh, I released a device called OnStar, and it's a it's a device that um, allows you to any car that has OnStar Remote Link. Uh, OnStar it, OnStar Remote Link lets you do a couple things. It lets you use your your mobile phone to unlock your car, lock your car, remote start it, so you can actually turn on. Uh, sound the horn, sound the alarms. Um, I think I have a quick video of that too. So here you can see, this is after I've hacked my friend's uh, remote link. He gave me permission. Um, I'm able to actually pop the lock on his car and then remote start it here. Um, I'll just show it again, it's real quick. But And the way I've done this is, there's the lock on his car. Um, <clears throat> this was a 2013 Chevy Volt, unmodified in any way. Um, so I created a device that you can actually put under somebody's car. And it uses a Raspberry Pi computer. It's an inexpensive $35 computer that you can run Linux on. Um, I used uh, a Wi-Fi card, uh, actually two Wi-Fi cards. And what the wi -Fi, one of the Wi-Fi cards is actually sniffing for mobile phones. So whenever the person goes into their car, your mobile phone is sending all these things called probe requests. It's saying, hey, what's your, uh, hey, is my home network here? Hey, is my, you know, other Wi-Fi network here. Um, and it will, my phone, my home network at home is called Red House. So whenever my phone goes anywhere, it says, hey, is there a Red House here? The box detects that, the OnStar box detects that, the device I created, and it creates a network called, called uh, Red House. So it pretends to be the network at my house. That makes the person's phone, whoever owns the car, jump onto my Wi-Fi network. From there, I actually intercept all traffic. I do a man in the middle attack, and I intercept all the traffic from the phone. And from there, um, because of some uh, incorrect cryptography in the app, I'm able to see the username and password of the remote link app. So when the user actually opens the app for the first time, I now have all their credentials, and at any time I can open the app, I can locate their car, unlock it, and then remote start it, and kind of do whatever I want to their car at any point in the future. Um, it's a really cool hack. Uh, I immediately let GM and OnStar know so that they could fix it. Uh, within about a week, I never, really, I hadn't released source code until they actually fixed the problem. Um, so they're pretty quick to fix it. And about a week later, they fixed the, the OnStar bug. Um, so about three million people got new app updates for free. The problem was fixed. And then uh, I kind of, I talked about it yesterday uh, at, at my talk. And uh, I did a little video on, on my YouTube as well on that, where uh, I go into a little bit more detail. And um, that's that's the GM hack. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, it's called, I'm really bad at you figuring out how YouTube works, so it's either called Applied Hacking or Sammy Camcar. Um, also, you could just, if you just search Sammy Camcar YouTube, I'm sure you'll find it. Um, or go to my website, sammy.pl, S-A-M-Y.pl, and I have a link to videos or YouTube right on there. Um, and yeah, I answer all comments, any questions on there. Um, so I, I really just want to uh, share with other people and, and hope and learn from other people as well on there. Uh, any other questions? No, oh, blinding light. No, okay. Cool. Oh, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for having me.